Hello there and welcome to another uh, screencast for the Cell Systems Unit. Uh, today we're going to take a look at diffusion and osmosis. A lot of this is review from previous years, so if you're fresh and up to date for diffusion and osmosis, uh, sit tight and just kind of enjoy the review. If this is something that you're kind of going, oh yeah, I remember that, but I'm not quite sure what it is, then this screencast is certainly for you. One thing I just finished enjoying was a nice big bowl of popcorn. I will eat popcorn until I'm blue in the face at the movies. I love eating my popcorn. And one of the biggest draws about popcorn is when you walk into that theater, that beautiful smell of freshly popped popcorn, and that, that will instantly draw me towards getting it. I might not even be hungry, or might have just finished a big meal, but I'll be honest, popcorn is my vice. It's that smell that just sort of travels right from the concession all the way out into the mall or all the way out into the front entrance. But why is that? Why can I smell it so far away from where it's being popped? The wonderful part about smells is that they have this ability to travel um, through the air. And the ability for everybody to uh, smell the odor is made possible by diffusion. This is why people closest to the smell of popcorn, for example, will experience a much stronger smell sooner than those far away. Similar to when a person down the hallway sprays a body spray near their locker, it's always very strong by the locker, and then kind of slowly gets um, less strong or, or diffuses away as you move away from the locker. Okay? Now, diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So this area of high concentration would be right by the locker if you spray your perfume or body spray. Or if you go to the theater and right by the popcorn poppers, that has a high concentration. And then as you travel away from those points, it's lower or the concentration decreases. And particles will always travel from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And this is the same uh, with any uh, uh, gas. Uh, let's start off with talking about gases. And as you can see on, on this animation here, that uh, particles are concentrated on one side of the membrane there, on one side of the wall. And they sort of just freely move back and forth until it's almost balanced out. Now this membrane it could be a cell membrane. And it acts like a filter with very tiny openings that will allow some of these particles to just travel freely back and forth in an effort to just even things out. Okay, they don't want too much of one thing on the inside or too little of one thing on the inside. Diffusion will allow those particles to travel freely until they're until they're evened out. Okay, now some membranes, like for example the membranes of your um, uh, 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 drawing a blank here, veins or arteries. There we go. Uh, will have um, holes in them, but those holes won't be quite big enough for everything to pass through. If you notice on the left there, let's say that's inside your bloodstream, and on the right side of the membrane there, the membrane being that yellow Swiss cheese looking thing, okay, on the right side there is no blood cells, but on the left side you can clearly see red blood cells. If the holes in the membrane were too big, blood cells would just travel out and you'd be bleeding all the time into your muscles or into your skin. Um, but traveling in the blood are all the nutrients and the oxygen and uh, all the different uh, uh, parts that your body needs in order to sustain a healthy uh, lifestyle. So the blood, even though it travels through and it doesn't manage to go out, there are holes within the membrane. And this is what we call a, a selectively permeable membrane. And what that means is that some stuff is allowed to travel in and out, but not everything. So Membranes that allow particles of one size or type in, but not others, is selectively permeable. And this is very important when we're talking about cells within our body, because cell cells in our body are highly selectively permeable. There is a, a conscious decision almost to allow some particles in and other particles not. Um, gases, however, <laughs> excuse me, are not the only materials or substances that are needed for a cell to survive. Water is, of course, extremely vital for the survival of and health of cells. But you can't have water traveling willy-nilly through a membrane. So this is where selectively permeable becomes very important. Okay? When you have water moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, this is called osmosis. So it's diffusion of water. But the trick is here that it's this line right here across a selectively permeable membrane. That means that the water is only allowed to pass through a membrane that allows water to pass through. Not all membranes will allow water to move in and out. 
So if the water does move in and out, that membrane is selectively permeable and the water will travel until it balances out. Think of this example here. Let's say I had a beaker and I had a fine filter that was selectively permeable and I placed a lot of salt water or sugar on the left side of the beaker and not a lot on the right. The, the water wants to move from an area of high concentration where there's lots of water to an area of low concentration where there's only a little bit of water. And if you look at the diagram on the right there, the water moves from the right side of the beaker into the left side. Because on the left side, there's a higher concentration of sugar particles, meaning that there's not a lot of water. So the water moves from the right side of the beaker through the selectively permeable membrane into the left side of the beaker, but not the other way. Okay, So it only moves in one direction, selectively permeable. And we looked at selectively permeable membranes a little bit in the beginning of the year when we talked about reverse osmosis. Okay, Now where do you see this happening? Where do you see osmosis happening in your body? Well. We see it when we get into the pool or out of the pool after a bathtub or a hot tub or in time we spent in the pool. Our fingers wrinkle. Why do they wrinkle? Where is water moving? Is it moving in or is it moving out? Contrary to what most people believe, it's water rushing into your cells because there's a much higher concentration of water inside the pool than inside your body. So the water rushes in and your skin folds to compensate for this extra water because in the body, folding increases surface area. So what am I saying here? What's all this mumbo jumbo? Osmosis is the process of water moving from high to low concentration. Your fingers wrinkling proves that your fingers have a lower concentration of water than the pool surrounding it. Where else do we see this? Blood cells. The red blood cells are a perfect balance of water needed for cell survival. If you increase or decrease the water concentration around a blood cell, it can have dramatic effects on how that blood cell operates. For example, if we have something called a hypertonic solution, you don't need to memorize that, but if it's hypertonic, if there's too little water on the outside, water will move out of the blood cells and they shrivel up into like nothingness. If it's too much water around the, uh, or inside the, uh, oh, sorry, too much water around the, the uh, blood cells, Water will rush into the blood cells and cause them to burst. They, they act like water balloons. So it's got to be just right. You've got to have that perfect balance of water moving in and out of a red blood cell to keep it that nice donut shape so that it can transport oxygen. So there's a good review on osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion should, de should definitely be review osmosis uh, as well, but also some applications is where we see it. Uh, you should be able to explain that uh, hopefully um, just by watching the screencast and by your notes. If there's any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know.